Welcome to NPTEL. I am Professor Jayanto Dash from Department of Metallurgical and Materials Engineering, IIT Kharagpur. I will be teaching you advanced materials and processes. Today, we will start our discussion on amorphous and glassy materials. Even though a very basic introduction has been given in the former classes, but today we will try to discuss a more a bit in detail. So, what really one mean by a glass? Like the glassy material shows a very characteristic glass transition. And now the question will arise, what do you mean by glass transition? We will come in detail, do not worry. However, these are non-crystalline solids and they possess a disordered atomic structure or atoms are randomly organized in the glassy structure. However, these glassy materials are obtained by continuous cooling from the liquid state. One has to keep it in mind that these non-crystalline solid disordered materials and glasses one should not confuse with because even though we often use the same terminology to express glassy material, but all the non-crystalline solid, all the disordered atomic structure materials are not glasses. So, glasses are only those material which has amorphous structure which are non-crystalline but it definitely should show a glass transition event, which is basically a second order phase transition. And the glasses are usually obtained when we start with a liquid and continuously cool the liquid and below certain temperature, the viscosity reaches to such a high level, it appears as a solid and we call it as a glass. And therefore, we need a little bit more discussion uh, along this direction. So, as I said that any glassy material definitely mean it has amorphous structure and it is non-crystalline. Okay? And therefore, let us uh, proceed with how really a glass transition event look like, what one should understand and what we can learn out of it. So, we can take a glassy material and put it inside a differential scanning calorimeter. Okay? And this is a, a device through which we can characterize different phase transition. So, let us have a look. So, here um, you see this is a plot of temperature versus DSC response. And if we look it very um, closely, then along this direction, the event represent it is the endothermic event. Here it is written endo, it means endothermic. Similarly, in the opposite side, it is a exothermic event. Now, if we take a glassy material and put it inside a DSC and simply rise the temperature, then we will get such kind of uh, uh, straight line response where there is almost uh, zero differences. However, there is a slight endothermic event can be noticed and after that it again become flat and again there is another event. So, this first event is linked with the glass transition which is a second order transformation and definitely it is endothermic in nature. So, endothermic event means the system takes the heat from the DSC and exothermic means the system or the material release the heat. So, here this is a exothermic event is shown here, this is often we call it as T x, T x means basically the onset of crystallization temperature and we measure here by drawing a tangent of this and this is the point 
which is the onset of crystallization event. Definitely here crystallization ends and those crystalline material start melting from here and this is the liquidus temperature. So, T liquidus temperature is here okay. and here we have liquid. So, here we have crystalline solid and here we have uh, glass plus crystal and here we have basically the, 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 the super cool liquid. So, so, here we have basically the super cool liquid. Now, let us see once again. So, super cool liquid plus crystal here we have solid which is in the crystalline state and here we have basically liquid and this liquid basically keep on degrading because of oxidation and so on. Let us try to understand if we take a glassy material and put it inside a differential scanning calorimeter then how the DSC response looks like. So, DSC here means differential scanning calorimeter a device that is used for studying phase transformation. So, I show you here a plot of temperature versus DSC response. Now, let us have a look that in this side the endothermic events are shown. So, the opposite side this is a exothermic. A endothermic event means that a thermal event that consume energy from the from the DSC okay. and the exothermic event that means that it releases the heat. And therefore, we need to look at what are the signals we get when we increase the temperature of a glassy material. So, the first transition where there is a little change of the slope of the curve is noticed and this is a signature of a glass transition which is represented at temperature of T g. Now, at beyond this temperature, beyond means above this temperature, the glass transform into a super cool liquid. Okay. Here it is represented by S L and if we further increase the temperature, then at this temperature here there is another thermal event started. So, here the crystallization starts. So, the onset of this temperature is called as T x and here the event ends. So, here we basically get a solid which is in the crystalline form and beyond this temperature we keep on heating then definitely in this temperature range it transform into liquid. So, here we get a complete liquid. On the other hand once again here basically two phase exist which is super cool liquid and the crystal and here everything is crystalline state here it is crystal plus liquid and here it is liquid. Beyond this temperature level it has been observed that oxidation may start and degradation of the material may occur. This is a typical uh, DSC trace I have shown you uh, which is a heating curve of a organic polymer. However, it really does not matter whether it is a polymer or a metal or a ceramic. The event and the fundamental principles are very same. So, we can clearly see that a second order phase transition which is a glass transition must be visible when the material is glassy. So, uh, let us uh, try to look at uh, as I said that what are the different kinds of material are possible which shows also glass transition and I said that ceramic, metallic or polymer. So, all different kind of materials whether the bonding is oxide or covalent bonding or metallic bonding these material could possess a glass transition and we call them as glassy material. So, in case of metallic system we call it as a metallic glass or otherwise the window glasses that is often used in our home those are ceramic oxide glasses 
or let us say the polymer the, the, the tire which also contain glasses. So, I am talking about the automobile tower tires. So, similarly all these glassy material will show such kind of phase transition event and these are very very characteristic event. This is as a liquidus temperature, this is as T x and this one is T g. T g stands for glass transition. So, definitely one can think about then what is the difference between ceramic, metallic and polymer because it is the bonding nature of the material whether they have covalent hydrocarbon bonds or they may have some sort of uh, um, ceramic or let us say uh, oxide bond and so on. But there is definitely a difference of the glass transition temperature of these three category of materials. I can tell you as an example, if we simply take a borosilicate glass which is very common often used in our laboratory, they should have a glass transition ara, around 800 to 900 degree centigrade okay. and below they are all solid. However, beyond that temperature then we can, we can uh, see a glass transition event. In case of metallic system, it is very common that around 400 degree centigrade there is a, uh, there is a uh, one can notice a glass transition. Whereas, in case of polymer, the glass transition is somewhat around let us say 70 to 100 degree centigrade, where uh, the melting temperature of ceramic may be something around 2000 degree centigrade. In case of metallic system, let us say the melting temperature is around 900 degree centigrade and in case of polymer may be it is 200 degree centigrade. So, as the melting temperature of the material decreases, the glass transition temperature is also decreases. So, there is a very uh, link between melting temperature of a material whether ceramic, metallic or polymer as well as their glass transition temperature. So, all these temperatures decreases or increases depending on which kind of material we are talking about. So, um, uh, so far we understood a little bit about what we really mean by a glass transition and what are the signature event of a glass transition. Now, once again if I simply start with a liquid and simply measure its specific volume and then plot the specific volume with the temperature. So, here it is the temperature axis and this is the specific volume axis. So, I start from here that is the liquid and I keep on cooling a liquid then the specific volume basically decreases. Now, if the system choose or the liquid uh, undergoes solidification and crystal nucleation occur then definitely there is a abrupt change of the specific volume of and then a crystal nucleate and definitely when solidification finish then below T m or melting temperature T m represent melting temperature then specific volume further decreases. However, if I take the same liquid and again cool it and cool it little bit faster than this case. So, let us say this is a case A and this is case B. So, in case B I cool the liquid which also decreases the specific volume and I undercool it or super cool it. Okay. I still have the liquid state here and below certain transformation below certain temperature the undercool liquid or super cool liquid transform into a glass because the viscosity basically increases in this range and the viscosity here reaches to certain value that is 10 to the power 13 points and it reaches and it transform into a glassy phase. So, we can clearly see at any given temperature the glass the specific volume of a glass is much higher than a crystal. So, there is some extra volume extra enthalpy is already inside some extra order of entropy is also inside. So, this is the excess volume which is inside a glass we often call it as a extra volume a free volume. So, therefore, when we cool a liquid we learn that a crystalline phase evolve below melting temperature when the system chooses 
or some crystal nucleation occur and the abrupt there is a change from here to here in the specific volume at melting temperature until and unless solidification completed. However, a glassy phase can evolve from here if we cool it down then there is a change in the slope near glass transition temperature. So, you can see here there is a change of the slope. So, here during cooling the specific volume and temperature here there is a change in the slope and therefore, it is characterized by a phase transition. Now, you can also have a look from this again same plot of specific volume versus temperature that there is a discontinuity during solidification because we are cooling the liquid from higher temperature to lower temperature. So, this is basically a solidification phenomena and crystal nucleate here and we get a discontinuity in the specific volume axis. However, here you see there is only a slope change and so therefore, this is basically a first order transformation and this is a second order transformation. Okay. And so, uh, we learn here that what really uh, a glassy phase evolve in a liquid, but definitely we need uh, to learn a little bit, but please try to remember that here liquid is disordered, here supercool liquid that is also a disordered phase and definitely the glass is also a disordered phase. However, these are more random pack structure than the liquid phase or a supercool liquid phase. Okay. So, this is a more and more random packed structure. Okay. So, let us uh, try to understand once again as I said how really the, the viscosity changes. I took the same plot in the left hand side you can see this is a specific volume versus temperature plot and if we kindly have a look that what really happen at melting temperature when we start from a liquid. Please have a look to the right hand side plot here from a liquid phase if we cool it down and if the crystal nucleates and solidification begin with crystallization then the crystal has a very very high viscosity level and it is greater than 10 to the power 13 points. Okay. So, the crystal has a uh, viscosity more than this value. Okay. So, there is a large difference between a liquid viscosity and a, a crystal. So, it is appear as a solid phase. Okay. And now, on the other hand, if glass transform from liquid, then definitely liquid if we cool it down then viscosity keep on increases. So, in this region. So, I am talking about from melting temperature to glass transition temperature. So, the viscosity increases up to P g and below this temperature below this temperature means this side the uh, new phase as a glass which is also a amorphous structure appear inside a supercool liquid and with a viscosity level greater than 10 to the power 13 points. Okay. So, this is a distinction between a solid phase and a liquid phase. So, that is a very clear distinction between a solid and liquid. So, a solid may not have a crystalline structure, but if it has a viscosity level greater than 10 to the power 13 points, then definitely it appear as a solid and uh, we call it as a amorphous because there is no crystallinity and that solid if it shows a glass transition event we call it as a glassy material. Okay. Whether it could be ceramic, it could be polymer or it could be metallic means metallic glasses. However, one should keep it in mind that uh, besides all these kind of viscosity changes or let us say the specific volume changes I have shown you these two uh, different uh, um, uh, parameters of change. However, there are many other thermodynamic changes like entropy, like specific heat, like enthalpy and also the compressibility. Okay. So, there are many different changes occur during 
this glass transition event. Okay. Those things we will discuss later on. However, uh, let us uh, continue uh, with uh, some some other uh, other uh, things. Uh, the question will arise, sir, how you choose that in one case a crystal will appear and in the other case you think that the glassy phase will appear. Definitely to form a glass, the trick here is to bypass crystallization. A crystallization event start with nucleation and growth of the crystals. So, nucleation if we can avoid nucleation of a crystal then we can retain that uh, undercooled supercool liquid and definitely which will transform into a glassy phase. So, one can always have a look and develop a TTT diagram okay, time temperature transformation diagram. A time temperature transformation diagram means formation of a crystal or nucleation of a crystal inside a liquid at a temperature close to melting temperature require some incubation time because some number of nuclei should be stable enough and they should start growing due to a, a delta T or under cooling level. So, here I show you a very interesting plot that we should keep it in mind the temperature versus time. So, this is a, a time temperature diagram on the formation of a crystal phase and this is the temperature which is the liquidus temperature. Okay. Liquidus temperature or let us say in a simplified way we can call it as a melting temperature. Okay. So, uh, at a melting temperature if we keep the liquid for very very long time then definitely nothing will happen uh, and also if we keep at very very lower temperature and hold that temperature below melting temperature then there is a requirement of some incubation time. Okay. So, this is called incubation time for growing the crystal nuclei. On the other hand, on the other hand here some amount of undercooling is required definitely to form a crystal. Now, let us assume that we have taken a cooling curve and starting from such a temperature where we have given some superheat. Superheat means delta T which is some amount of temperature rise above melting temperature or liquidus temperature and then I cool it. So, definitely cooling means there is a requirement of time and there is a drop of the temperature and then really here the nucleation actually starts and grow and then we transform the liquid from a liquid phase we get a crystalline phase. However, all the crystal transform and there is no way that we can get any other phases except crystalline phase. However, if we can bypass this somehow then we may get some other phases. How? From here again we started cooling however, this cooling rate is much more faster means the drop of temperature is much more faster than the other case. So, here we bypass the nose of this TTT curve and then we cooled this super cooled super cool liquid and this super cool liquid when uh, there is a temperature it reaches to a temperature below glass transition temperature then we get a glass and this is the uniqueness. So, here a slower cooling it may transform to a crystal whereas, in the other case we will get a glass when we cool the same liquid a little bit faster. Now, so, we will have a very very clear distinction between a liquid, a supercool liquid and a crystal and a glass. So, let us start with this uh, phenomena and then you can ask a question sir whether uh, any material we can transform into a glass from the liquid state. If so may or may not how 
it also depends on this TTT diagram. So, in a particular case this is a schematic I had shown you, however, it may be that in a in a different uh, material uh, the TTT diagram and the nose lies here. Then the more and more fast we cool actually we cannot get it. Okay. So, we can again draw it here may be this case okay, or may be this case this is the TTT diagram and then I really need a much faster cooling rate to transform this liquid into glass. However, in this case may be there is no opportunity at all because it re need such a very very high cooling rate then we really cannot reach up to this glassy phase. So, this critical cooling rate is very much important. So, this is a cooling rate that is required a definitely required to transform a under cool liquid or super cool liquid into a glass. So, let us uh, uh, we have tried to understand that when a liquid is cooled then how much really uh, uh, faster cooling rate we really need to transform into a glassy phase. Now, in case of a of a ceramic glass let us think about what is the typical structure. So, let us say in case of a ceramic glasses or a oxide glasses here the basic units are SiO4 tetrahedrons. So, here these are uh, silicon uh, 4 plus and O 2 minus atom. So, red color silicon 4 plus atoms are shown here and O 2 minus are shown as a blue color. Okay. So, this is a tetrahedron structure, this is a basic unit and now quartz is a phase which is the crystalline form of silicon dioxide. So, in that particular case you can see this red colors SiO 4 and the next one is O 2 minus they are arranged periodically in order to get this crystalline quartz structure. However, we can add some sodium or magnesium or calcium or aluminum ions which basically modified the, 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 the structure of the glass and you can see that here in case of ceramic glass the glass is definitely amorphous and by adding some impurities we, uh, we enhances the glass forming ability of the structure and th the addition of impurities also help and it retard the formation of crystalline structure. And the same structure you can see here by comparing these two here there are many broken bonds. Okay. So, we have added these impurities actually to modify and tailor the structure of a crystal. Okay. So, there are same tetrahedrons exist however, they are distributed. So, the uh, random pack structure uh, really does not or closed pack, pack structure like crystalline uh, crystalline material does not exist in case of a soda glass. So, this is called a amorphous structure. So, we uh, tried to understand that uh, a glass is definitely should show a glass transformation or glass transition which is a phase transition. And we can get such phase transition when liquid a uh, super cooled and a new phase as a glass evolve there. And also we tried to understand that what is the meaning of such kind of amorphous structure or let us say a random st atomic structures. Now, let us I show you one example of such a structure uh, like this is a high resolution transmission electron microscopic image of a of a of a uh, zirconium based uh, metallic glass. So, you can see the atoms are arranged randomly. Okay. So, everywhere if you see that uh, there are many atoms are surrounding one atom, you can take any of the atom there are many atoms which are surrounded by its nearest neighbor. And we can take a selected area electron diffraction pattern and here this is in a reciprocal space. So, in real space 1 by d actually. So, if you integrate this then you will get such kind of pattern which you can see here like a like a 2 theta versus intensity or if you transform from d to 2 theta. 
Okay. So, this is a amorphous halo where there is no sharp peak can be seen whereas, in case of crystal we will get very sharp spots. Similarly, similarly if we look at uh, the basic structural unit in case of a crystal where this is a different or the same type of atom positioned and different location and there is a very clear symmetry exist. However, we can uh, consist of two different element where this is a bigger and this is a smaller element where they are also periodically arranged. But if we th think about a amorphous structure then definitely these structures are, are quite the atomic bonds are not at all equal. So, you can see the bond length here the bond length is different than the bond length here or here the bond length is different than here or maybe here the bond length is different. So, you can see that the amorphous structure are very very different compared to the crystalline structure. So, we today learned that glassy material are amorphous in structure and they show a very clear glass transition event and they are non crystalline solid because the viscosity is greater than 10 to the power 13 and definitely when liquid or mostly the liquid cools down then they passes through a glass transition event and ultimately glass phase evolve. We will discuss and we will further discuss these things in the next class will be continued. Thank you.